later on, I realized that it will not be the right time to explain you the impact of two different positions hold by agent at the same time. First of all, because you need to understand the concept of agency, thereafter you will be able to differentiate. But even though as I started yesterday, the difference between agent and daily, and there was some confusion and even maybe I was not able to explain you properly. So just to give you a clear idea for agent and daily interlinked relationship at the same time, I will first of all talk about it and thereafter I will start from your section 186 onwards dealing with what dealing of the agency can be created. So now how far the agent and daily is concerned, I was just trying to tell you one thing. First of all, both of these uh, positions are different. Both of these capacities are different and both of these are to be generated by, generally generated by two different contracts and used to emerge by two different contracts. First is your contract of agency by which there will be a relationship of principal and agent. Second is the contract of payment by which there will be a relationship as a bailer and bailee. How far the bailer and bailee is concerned, I hope how far the position is concerned, that was clear to you with the help of the dry cleaner example. But how I tried to I connect tried it to, to agency, to agency. I, I, I am explaining you again. I was just trying to explain to you that in a case of or in a contract of agency where somebody has been appointed as an agent due to the, the need of the time, he may also act as a bailey or he can be also at same time in a position of bailey. So uh, my uh, purpose was to just to tell you, suppose I hired you as an agent and uh, during the continuity of the contract of the agency, it may be possible that I transfer you the possession of my property for some particular purpose. Then you will not be having only the duties, obligations as an agent, you will be also having automatically, automatically the duties to take care of my property as a daily as well. Uh, and other thing which was here to be clear in that if the, the moment or as automatically there will be generation of the daily relationship and uh, uh, similarly automatically when the object will be completed, when the possession you will be dispossessed from the possession of my property and you will be departed from possession of my property automatically the bailment or the daily obligation will be over. Now, uh, another point which was included in this, if the bailey position or the capacity is over, just because of reason that now you are not anymore in possession of my property, that ending of uh, your obligation as a bailey or that ending of your capacity as a bailey or your legal obligation as a bailey will not automatically over the agency. So, both of these can be hold by a person at same time and in the different capacities, legal and obligations will be different. So this is what I was just uh, uh, explaining you. I hope now the interconnection is clear to you because I admit that yesterday I failed to connect it to you, uh, to you in this regard, bailment and agency. Is it clear? After that I can move further. Now is the position is clear? Please yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so today we are going to start your very important part of the agency after learning that who can be the principal, who can be the agent, who can appoint the you know agent, what are the requirements for a being valid uh, you know agent or principal. Now we are going to take up very important area that uh, how there can be creation of agency, how there can be creation of agency for that we need to uh, start from your section 186. <clears throat> for 186 please uh, see your bear act and in your bear act you can see agent's authority may be expressed or implied. I just want to recall your section 9 of your Indian contract act which is sounding similar. Right, and if you remember your section 9 of your Indian contract that it is given here, any contract can be written, any contract can be, uh, sorry, any contract can be expressed, any contract can be implied. So, you can have formation of a contract expressly 
or impliedly. There is no bar in Indian Contract Act. And and how far agency is concerned, agency is also uh, uh, agency is also creation of a contract. So similar provision has been given in your section 186, and it is written there: agent's authority may be expressed or implied. So uh, read further: authority of an agent may be expressed or implied. And if we will interpret it, it means there can be creation of agency through express way or implied way. Can you just explain what we understand by the express contract when we will say that there is an express contract any one of you it's expressly mentioned expressly means means ma'am it's written it is not only written it is written or oral right yes written or oral expressly means when we will say that we have formed a contract expressly it means written or oral right and when we will say that we are having a contract impliedly from act, actions and conduct yes by conduct right by, by circumstances yes by that the, yes very much right whether the contract is implied or not it is, it, it is to be inferred from the conduct of the parties. It is to be inferred from the situation, the surroundings, relationship, that how they are reacting into particular uh, situation. Uh, for example, again, I always prefer to give the illustration in your contract law uh, of your day to day life because you will be able to connect it too easily. For example, uh, just take an example you are boarding a bus, you are uh, boarding a, boarding a med or you are going to have a samosa in canteen, you are going to have tea or coffee or any eatable uh, thing. So, what you used to do, whether you used to make it contract uh, expressly, they are, I want to purchase this or that and I want to give you five rupees consideration for that. But then we used to do such kind of formality, whether we used to stop the bus first before that and before boarding it, uh, boarding into it, we used to ask the conductor, we want to go there, we will pay this and he will say, he will pay. No, everything used to run in our day-to-day -day life, mostly by the implied contract. So, Implied contract is your meaning what? That uh, uh, when we are going to make a contract through conduct, through uh, you know, our relationship, through situations, it can be inferred. And expressly will always be there uh, required to be in writing or in, uh, you know, in oral way express. It must be expressing. There must be some external manifestation. Right? And uh, let me tell you, uh, this is the thing that uh, Indian Contract Act in general, that it is providing the provision from your section 1 to 75. And this specific section, which is dealing here, section 9, which is declaring that contract can be expressed or implied, right? Uh, it is it is something, it giving you general principle. But when you are dealing with a special kind of the, uh, sorry, special kind of the contract, in special kind of the contract, in a special statute, there may, may be something extra, you know, requirement for it. Just recall your Transfer of Property Act. Transfer of Property Act is also a contract by which you used to transfer the ownership in your property to somebody else, right? Or any right in the property to somebody else. That is also a contract. There are two parties, but... But for that special kind of the contract, it is required by your TPA, it must be in right. Yes. First of all, it must be in writing. After writing, it will be registered. So this is the reason we need to have a separate net for dealing it with special requirement to be fulfilled. Similarly, when you are uh, going to start your uh, partnership in your this subject, there you will also learn partnership will be, you know, constructed by writing and it should be registered. What will be the impact of the loan registration? One more thing, however, uh, it is not directly, uh, you know, connected here, but I really want to share with you that when you must have read your section 9 of your Indian contract, that if you remember the language or you, you have a period with you, you can see that it is saying here when it is expressed, when it is, uh, you know, implied. But I'm asking you a question, what if uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is partially expressed and partially, you know, implied? For, for example, I'm asking you that 
will you purchase my you know uh, pair act right uh, thereafter you did not see anything in the turn of that but you did you from next day you started using my pair act and you transferred the money into my act तो वो क्या हो गया वो तो इम्प्लाइड हो गया मीन्स योर एक्सेप्टेंस इज इम्प्लाइड एंड माई ऑफर गोज एक्सप्रेस सो माई क्वेश्चन विच आई वॉन्ट टू फ्रेम विच आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू दैट वट इज पार्शल एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज पार्शल इन एक्सप्रेस एंड पार्शली इम्प्लाइड वट विल बी द नेचर ऑफ इट वेदर इट विल बी इम्प्लाइड और वेदर इट विल बी अू नो एक्सप्रेस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एज पर यू इम्प्लाइड okay so it will be definitely implied but it at same time it has been uh, you know referred by your uh, mulla uh, in your mulla book that there is need to have a change into the uh, into the uh, indian contract act specifically in section 9 to clarify whether it is uh, in, what will be the nature of the contract whether it will be implied or whether it will be expressed now coming back to the in the fact in the section 186 so first thing which we uh, uh, learned that the relationship of the principal and agent may be created in any of the following ways first is express appointment second is by conduct of the situation of the parties right till now it is the it is the thing and for further uh, understanding the definition of express and implied authority before that i just want to again uh, you know to uh, discuss about what that for any contract we have studied that there is need to have the consent without consent there will not be a contract so we should keep that basic requirement into our mind when we are talking about the express authority or express implied authority it is actually meaning of the consent that i give you the consent to represent myself right to, to represent me to somebody so there is need to have the consent and consent means uh, principle uh, in uh, for the formation of a valid contract of agency there must be consent of principal as well as of agent means principal has given the consent to represent himself even the agent has also given the consent to represent right so for understanding the express or implied authority read your section 187 in your direct first of all uh, read it then i will take all this provision together for the Uh, uh, explanation. So, definition of express and implied authority. An authority said to be expressed when it is given in words, spoken or written, as I just explained to you. An authority said to be implied when it is to be inferred from circumstances of the case, and things spoken or written or ordinary course of the dealing may be accounted circumstances of the case. So. Similarly, what is the lacuna in your section nine? Similar, uh, you know, problem is there in your section one eighty seven, which is talking about either the authority transfer or the authority assignment will be by words spoken or written expressly, completely, or either it will be inferred. It will, it is to be inferred from the circumstances of the cases. So again, here also required to have an explanation for purpose where partially it is expressed, where partially it is implied. then what will be the nature of it whether we are going to consider it valid or not and for proper understanding i always used to suggest to uh, whenever you are dealing with such uh, statutes like your indian penal code like your contract right or uh, any your partnership don't ever skip any illustration given in your pair act reason being if you are going for first of all it is it is going to make your concept more clear second it is going to help you very much in your competitive exams so read your illustration given to your section 187 he owns a shop in um, serum uh, port living himself in kolkata and visiting the shop occasionally the shop is managed by b and he is in habit of ordering goods from c in name of a for the purpose of shop and of paying for them out of a's fund and a's knowledge he had but uh, okay honestly just don't read the next line if you are honest to me and to yourself till here answer me if there is a shop uh, and i don't you generally use to visit the shop i occasionally only visit shop is mine and i have hired you to manage the shop you are uh, you know ordering on my behalf you are paying on my behalf and it is in my knowledge knowledge is very important if something is not in my knowledge you cannot say that it is with my consent right so what will be the nature of the authority authority given nature will be there in client so so this is the illustration by which we can understand 
we can have or take another example uh, uh, suppose uh, somewhere you are representing me for the take the and again the simple example of uh, selling my bear at i just talk to you that um, i want to sell my bear at there after you started to talk to the other people right that she wants to sell her bear at and you had a Uh, uh you had a uh, contract uh, with somebody else on my behalf there after i remained silent that i gave him i transferred my direct to him i gave the delivery of my direct to him and i took the money so all that is what all that is implied there after radio section 188 provision and uh, i just want to inform you again that uh, how far your llb exam is concerned you need to focus on the agency their provisions interpretation more right and uh, uh, extent of agent's authority an agent having an authority to do an act read carefully this one an agent having an authority to do an act has authorized to do every lawful thing which is necessary in order to do such act right so it is just telling you if somebody has given you the authority as the agent what will be the extent of it extent of it will be what okay first of all recall just what that uh, here you are agent not the son the principal is not going to direct you that how it is to be done he is given he giving you the full authority and uh, full authority to do one particular task and for doing that you will be having all those powers no full powers no uh, you are to do, you are having all those authorities which are lawfully requiring to accomplish that particular task which are necessary and please see that what is a lawful thing in regard of a particular uh, case what is necessary that is also subjective it will vary from case to case right so an agent can do anything lawfully for which is necessary in order to do an act thereafter Uh, it in next paragraph is talking about specifically business earlier we, we are talking about uh, in general we are talking in general now we are talking about specifically to the cases of the business so an agent having an authority to carry on a business has authority to do every lawful thing necessary for purpose or usually necessary for purpose or usually done in course of conducting the uh, such business so first of all in case of the business you can do any lawful act which is required which is necessary plus apart from that you can do any any activity which used to be generally followed as a practice while conducting similar kind of the business about which you have hired a person as an agent so this is what this is at uh, you know extent of the authority so let me just uh, tell you however again i am telling you i am just giving you first of all overview of uh, these provision and we are going to discuss in detail after that but i just want to tell you that even agent can do only within the ambit of the law there is that if i have asked you to sell my house you are having only uh, you are having authority to do only such things which are required to be done for selling my house no but you did you failed to sell it for 50 rupees each right thereafter when it was it was getting parished then you sold it to uh, sorry sold it for 10 rupees each just to Avoid the loss. अब मैंने आपको पावर सिर्फ कितना दिया था यू कैन सेल फॉर फिफ्टी राइट बट देर आफ्टर यू आर सेलिंग इट फॉर टेन सो विल इट बी अ वेलिड पावर एक्सरसाइज बाई यू आंसर इज येस बिकॉज यू टूक दैट डिसीजन इन एमरजेंसी फॉर दैट यू not taking that step because it is to save the uh, the principal from the loss or it is a need of the time right so a certain kind of the powers are here with the agent during the emergency right so this is to be also remember so read uh, for that there is a specific section in your section 189 section 189 is dealing with what agent's authority in emergency an agent has authority in an emergency to do all such acts for the purpose of protecting his principal 
from the laws as would have as would be done by a person of ordinary prudence in his own case under the similar circumstances so uh, so an agent can take any action can do anything if it is for purpose of saving his principal from the laws but what will be the test to analyze that he did right or wrong the test will be that what would have been his conduct right sorry what would ha- what would have been this uh, uh, you know uh, situation if if uh, in, in the civil situation what would have any other ordinary prudent person reacted in which manner he would have reacted right and if it is it, it would have been his own case so just like the bailey he is here to react he is here to act right he is the good would have been his own and the test of uh, you know the right or wrong reasonable or unreasonable will be the ordinary prudent person we are not Uh, expecting someone who is intelligent we are just taking the level ordinary prudent person under the similar circumstances so let me just tell you one more thing the power which has been given in emergency to an agent under section 189 the similar power has been given to your um, uh, partner under section 21 of indian partnership act so whether the provisions are clear whether the provisions are clear so we we are going to start your Uh, creation of agency with different heads. Provision clear, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So creation of agency. First of all, I want to tell you. Uh, in fact, I want to quote you the words of uh, Justice Desai, uh, given in the Supreme Court judgment, one of the Supreme Court judgment, and citation for which is uh, Su Kumari Gupta versus Dhirendra Nath. If you want to write down Su. Um, no, not this one. This one is another. Sorry, Syed Abdul Kader, Syed Abdul Kader versus Remy Reddy. I'm going to write down. There is a question, ma'am. Can a husband appoint his wife as an agent? I'm going to take up that. Don't worry. I'm just explaining you. There are uh, just after this, Syed. agency the relation of agency arises the relation of agency arises whenever whenever one person the relationship of agency arises whenever one person called the agency one person one person called the agent the relation of uh, agency ma'am whenever one person ma'am after that i am repeating the relation the relation of agency arises whenever one person whenever one person called the agent called the agent has authority has authority to act to act on behalf of another to act on behalf of another on behalf of another called the principal called the principal and consents and consents so to act and consents so to act full stop the relationship has the relationship has genesis the relationship has genesis in a contract the relationship has genesis in a contract now please uh, move to next line and write down the relationship of principal and agent the relationship of principal and agent may be created may be created in any of the following ways 
the relationship of principal and agent may be created may be created in the any of the following way first is by express provision uh, by express appointment first by express appointment second by conduct by conduct or situation of the parties by conduct or situation of the parties third third by necessity of the case third by necessity of the case fourth by subsequent rectification fourth by subsequent rectification of an of an unauthorized act of an unauthorized act i am telling you again first way of creation of the uh, agency is express appointment second by conduct or situation of the party to which we used to call implied plea third by necessity of the case at times it is required fourth by subsequent rectification of an unauthorized act so Uh, the thing which is uh, first of all before taking up the first one how far the fourth is concerned we have not talked about it yet and i just want to give you an idea uh, for that for creation of agency or uh, like any other uh, contract there is need to have consent right means you can how when you can act for uh, act as an agent for someone when you are having consent of that person if you don't have the consent of that person you cannot act but at times you will realize that consent can be given before creation of agency or consent can be given there after as well and uske baad kab denge there after by rectification so uh, an example for that suppose you have not hired me as your agent right but i acted as your agent i uh, uh, i tried or i i i i need a contract on your behalf in someone now when i acted without your authority when i when i acted without your consent as a person uh, who to whom we can consider the principal you will having two options to reject that i had never appointed him or her as as my agent or to ratify that and when we will do ratification ratification will give the power to me from the back from the time from where onwards i started to act as your agent so there can be creation of agency by ratification as well now i will take up i will start from your first express appointment when you will see that express appointment is here any person can appoint other person expressly as his agent whosoever is of sound mind right and we appoint so in english law uh, what the people are asking I always as i whenever i teach your uh, contract even in your first semester i always keep emphasizing if you are uh, studying anything in your contract so uh, keep doing the comparison between the english law and indian law because uh, in interviews they will ask you the question that what is the position in english law what is the position in indian law and there is a logic or the reason behind it and what is that with indian law is based upon your english law so uh, keep comparing both of these whether it is similar or not so after the express appointment of the agent is concerned so english law is specifically saying no man can become agent of another except by the will of another so will can be manifested in writing or orally so similar somehow similar rule is there and how far india is concerned we can see we uh, have the will ka matlab it is yeah could you please repeat it okay i just told you that in england the term which they are using that is the will ki uh, the person one person can appoint another person by the by the will means no one can act as an agent without the will of another person say so, uh, synonym use kar rahe hain wo bas term term consent bol rahe hain wahan pe wo term will bol rahe hain that you cannot act as what 
as my agent without my will. And in, in India, we are saying you cannot act as an agent without my consent. This is a small difference. Apart from that, there is a similar law how far the appointment or express authority is concerned. So, let us talk about the relationship of principal and agent. So, in India or in general, we can sum up here that principal and agent can only be established by the consent of principal and agent. Both of these consent, dono ki chahiye, will dono ki chahiye, whether I want to act, your, uh, act as your agent or not, whether you want me to act as your agent or not. So, how far Indian law is concerned, you will make reference of section 182 and it is section 182 is the wider one. So, uh, wider one and it is saying that there can be appointment of, okay, one, one more thing I want to highlight from your section 182. Again, see your clear act. It has been written here. An agent is a person employed to do any act for another to represent another in dealing with the third person. The person for whom such act is done or who is represented is called the principle. Okay, based upon your definition of section 182, uh, till the discussion we had, uh, till now the discussion we had. So, answer me one question whether one single person, which I asked you earlier as well in your last class, whether one single person can act and can be appointed as an agent by two or more. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there is no restriction. So, Yes. Well, yes, there is no restriction. So I just want to tell you that agent, uh, uh, the agent, anyone can be the agent even to more than one person to co-owner to even even he is not co-owners. So you can uh, you can be my agent also. You can be uh, agent of somebody else. There is no restriction for it. So uh, this is what. So I want to tell you uh, another important thing. The person appoint uh, even the court at times may appoint agent on your behalf and any person appointed by the court to manage the affairs of a mental patient has been held to be the patient's agent. Okay, so here I want to again just connect it to the minor case as I told you that how far the power to appoint an agent is concerned. Minor do not have that power because minor is not competent to make a contract. But answer me one question, whether the guardian of the minor can, can appoint an agent for minor? Listen carefully my question, whether a guardian of a minor can appoint an agent for minor or not? Should I repeat the question? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Should I repeat the question? No, ma'am, the answer is yes, yeah. that the parent okay. can... Yeah, anyone, anyone, uh, even the guardian can appoint the agent for the minor. So, this is what we are talking about express. Express in other terms, it may be, sorry, it must always be writing express uh, or oral. So, how far the power of attorney is concerned, that is also something uh, through that power of attorney, you are appointing somebody as an agent to act on your behalf. And here I want to give a reference of Halsbury Laws of England. I am referring you, I am writing here the book you are giving, of which you need to refer. Halsbury, you must have given reference of it earlier. First of England. It is volume 1, of which I am giving you reference. Volume. One edition and para seven hundred twenty. So I am quoting you a line from the Halsbury book. Please write down in inverted comma. There are only two lines, right? Co principles. No. This is in regard of the co-owners or co-principals that how somebody can be appointed as an agent by two people. Co-principals co may jointly co-principals may jointly appoint an agent may jointly appoint an agent to act to act for them to act for them and and 
in such case and in such case become become jointly liable to him jointly liable to him and and may jointly and may jointly sue him may jointly sue him so over principle may jointly appointed agent to act for them and in such case become jointly liable to him and may jointly sue him so i just want to tell you this is not only the agent who is having liabilities or duties towards the principal in a similar way the principal is also having certain duties and rights against the agent so if there are people uh, co principals who jointly appointed somebody as an agent they will be having uh, the agent will be having right against them co jointly and will also be having liability against them co jointly so this is the point so another thing which i want to tell you that is uh, in regard of the uh, oral agreement i want to give you reference of a case heard versus pillay i am writing the citation uh, excuse here excuse me ma'am yes ma'am uh, as uh, on the line that you told us right now so ma'am is it mandatory for uh, the joint uh, principals to mm. have cons- a consent is it that a single principal can also no no, no. without without consent you cannot be the joint okay thank you unka consent hona chahiye only then they will be the joint this is an english case of which i am making you the reference again write down one line for that I have given you the citation in your chat box. An oral appointment is also valid. It is in regard of uh, express. When you are uh, appointing somebody orally in the of express uh, agency, an oral appointment is also valid. An oral employment appointment is also valid, even though, even though the contract, even though the contract. Which the agent is authorized to make, even though the contract which the agent is authorized to make has to be in writing, has to be in writing. Because your section or one eighty. Ma'am, please repeat it again. हाँ जी, an oral, an oral appointment, an oral appointment. is valid enough an oral appointment is valid enough though the contract though the contract which the agent is authorized to make which the agent is authorized to make has to be in writing has to be in writing okay i am giving you one of one minute to all of you read this statement and give me an illustration suiting to this statement should i repeat the statement please tell me an oral appointment is also valid enough though the contract which the agent is authorized to make has to be in writing iska ek suitable example do mujhe sab dimag lagao Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I have a question. Can you say that? Uh, be, be, before uh, that, sorry, sorry. What's your good name? Yeah, I'm Suganda. 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 I'll take up your question. But before that, read this. Is it is it related to the same statement? No, ma'am. Which, which I just gave you. Okay. Okay. Before that, just uh, I will take up your question. Just read the the statement which which I have given you just right now and try to. Frame an illustration for it. Yes, Are you ready, or is there no illustration into your mind? Should I tell you, or you failed? 
ma'am uh, my interpretation of the statement is very uh, the obvious literal interpretation that for example a appoints uh, impliedly or orally b as his agent to sell his house so right, right. that it would be an oral uh, that would be an oral contract of agency they don't need to write it uh, express oh sorry put it into writing but the contract b would further make with any person regarding the sale of the property everything of that has to be in writing yes in this short i just want to explain you the statement even though for the contract for which purpose you are appointing the agent is is required to be in writing means the agent is going to have a contract with the principal and the third person that contract is to be required to be in writing that is not going to affect even if the agent was appointed orally or, or impliedly so even for a contract which is to be required in writing you can appoint somebody as your agent impliedly there is no restriction for that is it clear to everyone Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, so okay. for a contract with a third person, which has to be in writing, can be done by an agent who can be appointed uh, orally. That yeah. is, uh, yeah, yes. that is the sole sole conclusion. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, Suganda, you may ask your question. Yes, ma'am. And you had said that a guardian can appoint an agent on behalf of a minor. However, yes. when you are explaining the concept of principle, you said that a principle uh, must understand the consequences of his action 